I think I'm a little underdressed to be standing next to this formal pond. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What is up everybody, it's Chris from Team Aquascape. We decided you have waited long enough to see the reveal of this gorgeous formal water feature. So the reason for the wait is very, very simple. We were brought in to restore this gorgeous, elegant formal water feature using the Aquascape methodology. The one thing we don't do is work with concrete and mortar. You've seen us nibble on it in a couple other videos, but we are not masons by any stretch of the imagination. So we're actually waiting on the masons to finish up their job and do the coping stones. In fact, you can see them right behind behind me right there. They are still plugging away and it's been a couple weeks since we've been out here but we decided you have waited long enough. With all that being said, I think I've probably said enough. You guys ready to get down to the reveal? Let's go. So I know this is not the typical aquascape ecosystem pond or water garden that you're used to seeing on our channel. This is quite the departure from what we normally do. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. I personally love how it turned out, how we were able to really capture the grandeur of this water feature. This is definitely unique and beautiful in its own right. Just, it's so, so cool. It's neat to be able to do something completely out of our outside of our wheelhouse, but yet still incorporate all of the aquascape methodology between the biological filtration with the huge wetland filter that's on here, but also the skimmer box down at the end and the circulation jets, and of course, the rock and gravel inside the liner. I love how it turned out. So if you guys could take yourselves all the way back to that first episode when we first introduced you to this project, you remember the overall footprint and the finished product of this design doesn't look that much different than what it does currently. But what we did was is we changed a ton of things inside of the water feature. If you remember, there were two skimmers. There was one on each end. And the downside to that is that what it's doing is it's actually creating this weird dead zone in between because the water and the debris that falls on top of the water doesn't really know where to go. Is it going to go to one end or the other? So what it does is they end up competing against each other and almost negating either one. So what we did was we created a current in this water feature by putting a skimmer box on the far end, but then we created an enormous wetland filter and that's that biological filtration that we always talk about. And what's happening is all that water is slowly pumped up through the wetland filter, gets to the surface and then gets pulled into the skimmer box in that little intake area. Also, what we did to increase the amount of circulation. We put two pumps down and a snorkel down there, one for the circulation jets. We want to be able to push any debris that potentially falls to the bottom back up into suspension so it'll get drawn down into the skimmer box. The other pump is for the three patio ponds, which we incorporated in off that back edge, which are a nice, elegant statement piece. Just adds uh, something a little bit more unique to this water feature and kind of puts our aquascape spin on what was already a pretty cool design. So the execution wasn't quite there before we got here but we definitely nailed it as you can see with the flow of water and where everything is collecting in the skimmer box as well as the clarity of the water so the error in trying to put a skimmer on each end that wasn't the only thing that we found going on out here that we wanted to change when we finally got into demo got all the rock all the gravel out we realized that there was a piece of ads pipe or drain pipe right in the middle of the pond with a bunch of aqua blocks that was filled
filled with sediment and debris and rock and gravel. Now, I think I kind of understand where the original contractor was going with it and creating a almost a bottom drain or an area to drain the pond all the way down without having to move a bunch of rock and gravel. The unfortunate part of it is there was zero biological filtration and you had the competing nature of the skimmer on either end. So everything just fell to the bottom, impacted that area, making it disgusting and gross and completely ineffective. So that was one of the things that we kind of scratched our heads trying to figure out what the heck was going on. We see this a lot with kind of these ponds done wrong, but still using our product is they just don't quite understand the components and how to put them together. So I think the intent was there, but the overall execution failed miserably. And I'm sorry to say that, but it was neat seeing them try to use the Aquascape approach and using those products. The next thing we saw after demo, after we got all of the rock and gravel out of here is we peeled back that liner and the fabric that was underneath. And what we found was probably the most horrible digging conditions I've been a part of since being a part of Team Aquascape. It was horrible. And to make matters, matters even worse, we had no machine access, so everything was done by hand. With that being said, I cannot give enough sheer thankfulness to the hardworking group of CACs that came and helped us out here on this project. Jeff, John, his son Elijah, Zach and Cameron from SitePro, Zach Cladden and his son Mason. I think that's everybody. I apologize if I missed you, but also a huge shout out to all the guys on Team Aquascape, DK, Chris, Juan. It was a mess out here because of how hot it was, the terrible digging conditions, and the fact that we had to do everything by hand. It was so awesome watching the small army of certified Aquascape contractors and us at Team Aquascape blast through this thing and get it dug to where we could finally start getting liner and rock back in this thing. So huge shout out to you guys. That was not easy. Okay, so we are standing down on the end where the wetland filter is. We did everything as one big solid excavation and that turned out to be a very smart move because what it allowed us to do, it allowed us to put everything inside of the liner and not have to fold that liner back and forth, back and forth to finish like you see us do uh, on occasion. The wetland filter in particular, because of the the nature of the substrate there was a lot of rock and gravel so what we decided to do was just excavate everything and then build ourselves a brick wall inside of the pond to hold back all the aqua blocks all the gravel all that strata that sits inside the wetland filter and it allowed us to actually create a much deeper pool on top of the wetland filter as well the other thing that's that's cool is we were able to run all of our plumbing inside the liner as well so when we were planning on the excavation we made sure to compensate for that so we didn't want to have these wide shelves along the sides. We actually narrowed them out quite a bit and then used a ton of gravel back behind those boulders to help rock up the sides. But what we did is we were allowed to run that plumbing inside the liner because the last thing we wanted to do is start tearing up all this patio all the way around to be able to run our plumbing externally the way you commonly see us do in our projects. So why don't we do a quick little run through of what we did. So you can see down here, this is our wetland filter. This is fed by a SLD 2000 to 5000 gallon per hour pump. Right underneath that cobble is our faux skimmer lid, which sits on top of the snorkel itself. And then our centipede runs right down the middle of this large, I would say it's probably 15 feet length from front to back. We have 36 small aqua blocks in here, and then we've got about six tons of rock and gravel on top of it. Over here, we get into the meat of the pond. This is that area that's all three and a half feet of depth, and we really, really tried to get as much water volume as possible. So the bottom section itself is probably three to four feet wide at the very bottom of the pond. So those rocks are going almost vertical while still making sure that we're stacking back behind. What's cool about that, and I talked about this earlier in the video, is our circulation jets plumbing, what we did was, we ran a three inch trunk line all the way down and then put a total of nine circulation jets where we just tee off of that three inch line and then put about a six or an eight inch stub of one inch flex at the very end and it's shooting water down at the bottom. We have some that are shooting straight up. We have some that are shooting back at the wall and those circulation jets are being fed by an SLD 5,000 to 9,000 gallon per hour pump. We wanted to make sure we got anywhere from 700 to 1,000 gallons per jet in order to create that adequate flow. That's not the last pump on here. The last pump is actually an SLD two to 5,000. So we have two of those, one for the wetland filter. The other feeds these three patio ponds in through here. They wanted something very subtle, very delicate, nothing overpowering. So we ended up going with a little bit smaller of a pump than you've seen us use plumbing these patio ponds before, but they just wanted a nice veil and a ribbon effect. And they wanted the, the versatility of being able to fine tune that flow. So that's in a nutshell, the plumbing, the guts of it, 
so so happy with how the project turned out the finish line is right here as you can see the coping stones are getting done those guys did a fantastic job really grateful that they waited on us to be able to finish everything and not breathing down our necks but it looks incredible i can't wait to see this thing in a couple years once all these lilies bounce back the fish are obviously loving it and i am too well I think that's a wrap. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. It was one of those that really beat the crap out of us, but was so fulfilling in the end because it's something outside of our wheelhouse, like I said. So, and I hope you guys enjoyed it and getting a little change of pace from us here on the Team Aquascape channel. So let us know in the comment section if you have any questions, but also we, we encourage your feedback. We love hearing from you guys. So keep that up. As always, you guys, thanks again. Don't forget to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for all the fresh Team Aquascape content and a little birdie told me that this Thursday episode is going to be pretty freaking cool and it's going to be a revisit of a project that Brian and I created last year. It's a backyard woodland setting and we are creating an extension. Actually we're creating a whole separate system made to look like it's all part of the original water feature. So really really excited how that turned out and I can't wait for you guys to see that one either. So that's Thursday's episode. Sunday you are going to get a up close and personal day with DK himself and he's going to be bringing you a a sphere in a very very tiny backyard and it's going to turn out incredible so i'm super excited for you to see thursdays but also sundays as, as well till next time we'll see you around thanks for tuning in adios